Hi and welcome in this new video. My name is Mark Lamarty, Head of Customer Education at Astronomer, best-selling instructor on Udemy. And in today's video, you will create a data pipeline using YAML and YAML only in Apache Airflow. YAML is a human readable data serialization language that it is commonly used in configuration files and in applications where data are being stored or transmitted. In the context of Airflow, that means you can build data pipelines without knowing Python or Airflow primitives, which is nice if you want to make your Airflow instance accessible to a broader audience than data engineers or data scientists. But even for data engineers, using the tool that you will discover later in this video will help you to avoid duplicating code and you will be able to better organize your tasks and data pipelines. So without further ado, let's begin. To follow this video, you can click on the link in the description below where you will find a Notion page where you have the prerequisites as well as the code that we will use. Also, to run Airflow locally, we will use the Astro CLI. If you don't know what the Astro CLI is, it helps you to run and set up Airflow locally following best practices. You go to this link, then install the CLI, pick your operating system and follow the instructions. If you don't want to use the Astro CLI, that's fine. You just need to go to the Airflow official documentation and use the official Docker Compose file. But again, you will have to set few things up yourself and you will waste a lot of time. So it's free, open source, use the CLI, honestly, you will love it. So now let's open a terminal. And here we're gonna create a new folder. So let's say DAG factory. Then go into that folder. And here we open our favorite code editor, which is in my case, Visual Studio Code. Then open a terminal and run the command astro dev init in order to initialize your local development environment. And that's what you can see on the left you have some folders and files that have been generated for you thanks to the Astro CLI. That's the beauty of it. Now, let's open the DAGs folder and open the following data pipeline. This data pipeline queries the list of astronauts currently in space from the Open Notify API and prints each astronaut's name and flying craft. And we will recreate this DAG but using YAML and YAML only. If you scroll down, you can find the DAG decorator. So we use the task for API with some settings such as the start date, schedule, and so on. And we have two tasks using the task decorator. The first task, get astronauts, makes a request to the following API to get a list of astronauts currently in space and returns the result to be used in the next task. Also, get astronauts produces a data set. So if you want to trigger a downstream DAG using this data set, as soon as the task has run, it is possible. So once you get the list of astronauts, in the next task, you want to print those astronaut names as well as the craft. And that's what you can do. As you can see here, we get the craft as well as the astronaut name. And finally, we print those information on the standard output. Now, as we want to print the name of each astronaut, and we want to create one task for every astronaut, we use dynamic task mapping. We call print astronaut craft, then partial as this setting doesn't change. We always want to print hello on the standard output. And then we use expand with the person in space and we pass get astronauts. So basically using expand for every astronaut, we create a task print astronaut craft that will print on the standard output, the following message. So now you know what the DAG does, let's move on to the YAML part. To build the DAG, we will use the DAG factory library. This library is open source and allows you to build DAGs using YAML. You can find the minimum requirements to run it, as well as a quick and simple introduction with a quick start, some features that this library covers, and so on. That being said, let's go back to the code editor and open requirements. So the first step is to install this library. For that, you just need to type DAG factory as well as the current version, which is this one. Then in the DAGs folder, create a new YAML file, let's say mydag.yaml, corresponding to your 
DAG. Okay, to define the name of your DAG or the DAG ID, you just need to put its name here. So let's say my DAG. And then you can attach some settings. For example, the default arguments. If you take a look at the previous DAG example, for the default arguments, we have owner and retries. So let's go back to the YAML file and add the owner, Astro, as well as retries to three. Now, you can see that the start date is defined outside of the default args, right here. However, this library expects you to define the start date in the default args. So make sure that if you use this library, you define the start date in the default args, otherwise you will see an error on the Airflow UI. Moving on to the next settings, we want to define the schedule interval at daily. That's what you can see here. And then catch up as well as the tags, exactly as described right here. So now we have the settings for the DAGs. Let's move on to the next part where we want to define the tasks. Going back to the DAG example, we can see that the task get astronauts uses the Python operator and creates a data set and does the following things. So let's do that. Go back to the YAML file and first use tasks where under this setting, you will define the different tasks that you have in your DAG. Again, the first task is get astronaut. So you need to define the task, get astronauts. This is the task ID, unique identifier of the task. And then you specify the operator that you want to use. In this case, the Python operator. This value corresponds to the import that you will make to use the Python operator. And that's how it works with this library. Each time you want to use a specific operator, you need to specify the corresponding import. Under the operator, you can define the Python callable name. This is a specific parameter that this operator expects the Python callable function to call. In this case, we want to execute the Python function called underscore get astronauts that we will create in the following file under include tasks and get astronauts.py. So let's create this file, open the folder include, then create a new folder called tasks and then a new Python file called get astronauts.py as defined here. And now you define the Python function that you want to run using the Python operator underscore get astronauts. So let's create this function and we want to do the exact same things as specified in the example DAG. So we can just copy and paste everything here. Now you can see that context is missing. So instead of using context, we can use TI directly in the parameter of the function. Remove this part and type TI. And then we need to import requests. So let's make the import here like that, and you can save the file. So just like that, you have created the Python function underscore get astronauts that this task get astronauts will run. We are not done yet as this task in the example DAG creates a data set. So the question is, how do we create a data set using YAML? Well, pretty simple. You can see that we create this data set using outlets. So we just have to do the exact same thing under Python callable file, we add the outlets parameter with the data set current astronauts. That's it. So just like that, this task will produce a data set exactly as defined in the example DAG. All right, so we are done with the first task. Let's move on to the second one, print astronaut craft. Again, this one uses the Python operator. So let's do the same. Under the tasks setting, we add a new task, print astronaut craft. This is the task ID. We add the operator exactly as we did for get astronauts, as well as the function we want to run with this operator, underscore print astronaut craft, and where this function is in the following file. So we have to create it like we did for get astronauts, create a new Python file, print astronaut craft, 
and then we create the function here. So let's do that. Copy this, paste it here. Then we have some parameters to add. So copy this and paste it here, as well as the content of the function. Like that. And now you can save the file. The last step is to use a dynamic task mapping to run the print astronaut craft task for each astronaut in space. So for that, we need to use print astronaut craft and then partial with the following parameter and this value, then expand with this parameter and call get astronauts. So the question is, how do we do that in YAML? Well, it might be a little bit different than what you would expect. So let's go back to YAML. And first, we have to define the partial parameter to print astronaut craft. So let's do that. We need to use partial, nothing crazy here. But then we have to use OP keywords. OP keywords is a parameter specific to the Python operator so that you can attach values to specific parameters. In this case, we want to attach the value hello to the parameter greeting as defined in the Python function here and described in the example DAG here. All right, so now the next step is expand. So for that, we're gonna use expand as well, like we did for partial, so we use expand. But instead of using the OP keywords, we will use the OP args. And here it's a little bit different because we are not assigning a value to a specific parameter using its name, but instead with OP args, you just pass the values as they are to the Python callable function. That means if you had another task, let's say, I don't know, get crafts, here, this get craft will be used in the additional parameter, let's say crafts here, which by the way, makes me think that we made a mistake. Indeed, the OP args must be before the OP keywords. So let's remove this and put person in space before greeting like that. And because we use dynamic task mapping, the DAG factory library expects you to return a list of list of values. So if you go back to get astronauts, here you are not gonna return a list of dictionaries, but instead you will return a list of lists where for each list you have a dictionary. So for that, we just need to type item for item in list of people in space and save the file. All right, so let's go back to the YAML file. We can remove that. And at this point, you have successfully defined dynamic task mapping in YAML. The last step is to define the dependencies between your tasks, and that's pretty simple. Under the task, so let's say print astronaut craft, you create the dependencies with dependencies and a list of tasks, so here only one, which is get astronauts. All right, you have successfully created the DAG in YAML. Now the next step is to generate this DAG, because the thing is Airflow does not know how to generate DAGs from YAML files. So that's why you need to create the Python script that will do that. So let's do it in the DAGs folder, create a new file, and let's call it generate underscore DAG, and here you just need to do the following. So that's pretty straightforward. You import the DAG object from Airflow that you won't use, but that will tell to the Airflow scheduler that it has to parse this file. And by parsing this file, that script will be executed and will generate the DAG from the YAML file, my DAG. And just like that, if you type astro dev start to start your Airflow instance and wait a little bit, you will see my DAG from the Airflow UI corresponding to the DAG that you have created using YAML. And congratulations, because now you know how to create DAGs in YAML, which again is useful if you want to generate DAGs from configuration files or if you want to standardize your DAG files 
Also, you will save time as it is easier and faster than Python. And because of that, more people will be able to work on your Airflow instance and not just data engineers or people that know how to code in Python. That being said, I strongly recommend you to take a look at the GitHub repository as you will learn how to use custom operator in YAML, as well as how to define one configuration file for every DAG that you create in YAML. And also, I recommend you to take a look at the code because looking at the code will allow you to know what are the settings you can use with this library. You may wonder, can I use this library in production? I would say yes. However, the documentation is still almost non-existent, but that will change because Astronomer has taken over this open source project. That means you are sure that this library will be maintained and supported and grow over time, which is a pretty good news. So you can expect a lot of updates very soon and so a better documentation. So now I hope you enjoyed that video. Hope to see you soon. Take care and have a great day.